we should be live. Hello, good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing? We have Norman D uh, from Bermuda Track. Well, uh, so ooh, Bermuda Islands, not Bermuda Triangle, because you know that would be. <laughs> Eddie Moser in the house. Logical Waste is at work, so unfortunately he cannot join us. We have Matt One UK, 3D printing stuff. Tony DSK R two A three eight six seven. Gary Chase, Tony Tillman, Patrick. How's everyone doing? Linus Tech. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lynx Tech. <laughs> so I thought Linus Tech. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Lightspeed. Hey, Andre. Editor, Lucky Benny, 3D Print Viking. Yoris. That's your <laughs> Eddie is back. <laughs> so we're here again, live stream. Um, today we're putting together the artillery sidewinder, uh, art artillery genius. I was going to call it sidewinder uh, genius, but it's the artillery genius. It's the sidewinder X1's little brother. When I say little brother, it's 220 by 220 by 250. So not so little but still has the awesome direct drive extruder. Um, I've noticed quite a few improvements, at least from the version that I have. Um, it's still the same spool holder, unfortunately, but with a small tweak. We'll get to that in a little bit. Three D printing noob, cool. Hello, Multimaker noob. Hello, Jan. <laughs> So, it's here. It has arrived. We're going to put it together. Uh, today is Sunday, so we'll, we'll be here for about an hour, an hour and a half. Um, so, make yourself comfortable. I have my 2% uh, my, my Rattler, um, just as an excuse as a beer, um, but tastes like grapefruit. So, <laughs> Are they still going by the artillery name? Apparently so. I don't think they've ever... I think what happened is people got so used to artillery, they've never did the, done the transition to Evnovo. So, uh, so yeah. If it's a genius, why did it not assemble itself? But um, <laughs> Just a for you. How many printers do you now own? Must be quite a few. Uh, a bit too many. Um, I own. I think about. In total, there's way over 50, but some of them have been decommissioned. Some of them are very old. Some of them never, I don't think I've ever used that much. Uh, I received, gave up on them. <sighs> You're getting slow anyway. I said an hour and a half live stream. So, Eddie, shh. <laughs> I want to talk about something that came into this package, uh, came inside the package, and I was a bit, you know, impressed about. So, first of all, it's this. This is the installation manual, and it, it's fine. Most printers have installation manual, but this is actually, not only is it decent quality, um, but it has English, Chinese, German, Spanish, French, Italian, and Russian. And it's glossy, and it's, mm, it smells, it has that awesome smell of paper. So yeah, decent manual. It has a readme first with all the hazards for you to go through. So you have the hazard warnings, electric shock hazard, burn hazard, fire hazard, pinch hazard, static charge, age warning. For users under the ages of 18, adult supervision is recommended. Okay. I don't think I need that. And finally, I have a QC checklist. And the QC checklist has, if it has any scratches, um, XYZ carriage moves smoothly. Is pulley and coupler fixed properly? FFC connected correctly? Part cooling fan shroud? H X carriage cover? Five step remoter works properly? Dry run? Uh, three fans work properly? Dry run? Heat bed uh, heats up correctly? It's a dry run. Print head heats up correctly? Dry run? Print bed is flat within test print area? No layering issues during test print? LED lights up and color is correct. Control from TFT. Filament runout sensor works correctly. Dry run. Power fail resume feature works correctly. Test print. Printer prints correctly. 
tool bag cables packed. That is their QC checklist. I don't think I've ever seen like a budget printer from China with a checklist. Okay, so, and this is the printer. We'll, we'll start going through the, um, let's start from, let's start from here. Let's start from the base. The base is easy. So, standard base, uh, just a shrunk down version of the X1. The only difference is there's a reset button now here. It's recessed, but it's a reset button. Um, everything else looks almost identical. Do not remove before finish assembly. Little things. Um, another thing I've noticed is over here, there's this connector. And this connector has the corresponding connector on the, on the gantry here, which just slides in. Uh, I'm guessing I'll have to undo those two screws and just fit it properly. Um, this we need to, well done, cable ties off, do like a Gordon Ramsay, cable ties, off, <laughs> over there, what happened to that really green printer, which, which green printer? Yes, the cover for the micro SD slot is actually, you know what? Let me show you. Let me see if I can zoom in. Wait, hold on. There. The cover, um, the surrounding area, there's a much tighter gap now. So your SD card, it's going to be difficult to put it, push it through there. Improvements, improvements, lots of improvements. Whoop, there you go. My hand is there. Okay. Hold on. This is getting hot. Uh, take my hoodie off. All right. So, same thing as before, the direct extruder with a volcano style hot end. This time it has an insulation sock on it, um, standard ribbon cables as per usual. Um, going on to what Angus has mentioned, these ribbon cables do not have like sort of like the clip on that ties them in place. Um, but for some reason they're relatively strong like, as in, I cannot just pull them out. Uh, there's one there. There's one here. And then there's the connector that goes into the board. Up here. So, back here, actually. Let's go through back here. Everything is injection molded. Hello, Hatoni. Tumania. Where's Tumania? No idea where Tumania is. So we have their patented, patented um, um, Z wobble backlash thingy, my Bob here. Um, this is artillery's patented design. Injection molded once again, covering the rollers completely. Um, still has this thing which I'm not too fond of, but you know, we'll leave it there, which is the belt going on both. Um, both Z-axis screws here. The belt, on the other hand, is a bit, you know, loose. But it's there at the end of the day. Um, I think they did it this way, so it won't kind of like pull against each other. It gives them a bit of slack, but that's fine. Injection mold at the top. Cable for the filament sensor there. So yeah, should be easy to put together. The right Z-Rod coupler. Um, yeah, this one looks a bit more bent than the other one, or a bit more flexed than the other one. This is interesting. 
Okay, so hold on. Okay, let me tell you what I'm seeing. Good catch, Dustin. Uh, let me move the camera a bit so I can show you guys what I'm seeing. So the nope, you still cannot see it. Whoop, there. So these up here, um, they're both aligned. The z-axis rods seem in the same height. So what I'm guessing happened is somewhere down here, someone screwed it all the way down. Yep, they did in fact. So this might just need a bit of lax. So I'm gonna be using the tool someone sent me. If you're in the chat, thank you. <laughs> Someone sent me these, and I'm loving them. Whoa! Project Railcore, R3D! Dudes! Keep up the awesome work, just dropped in to say hi. You do Jesus, hi! <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Uncle Jesse. Wow, sorry, I'm, I'm completely blown away. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so, so much. Okay. There you go. That's all it needed. Just a bit of slack there. I'll probably check that again once I assemble it, just to make sure that the gantry is aligned. Does this have thermal runaway protection? Yes, at least the artillery uh, Sidewinder X1 did. I'm guessing this one has as well. The one you're working on looks stretched out. The other looks compressed. Yep, they both need a bit of playing around. So I'll assemble it so then I can play around with it. Um, need to adjust the camera again. Oh, there you go. There. Okay. Cheers to you, R3D. I will eventually get a rail core on this channel. Things are looking up at the moment, so fingers crossed. Now, putting this together. Just move it here. I'm just going to insert this cable so it's ready. That is for the um, filament sensor up there. Okay. Now. Thanks, Chris. So I'm just undoing slightly this uh, connector down here. Uh, let me zoom in so you guys can see. I need to move this closer to me. There. So. And then we can just move them down so it pairs up nicely. So much for the QC checklist, right? <laughs> Excuse me just a second. I just need 
that. Hey, Mike. Hi, Joel. Sorry, a bit away from topic. Got my Sapphire Pro. Deeply disappointed with the hot end. Getting clogged, nozzle frequently. Unable to print anything. Any recommendations? I have a Sapphire Pro. I haven't done the review yet because, well, it had issues when I got it. Still has a few issues, which I'm figuring out. Um, so, fortunately, I don't know what much to tell you other than clear up the hot end and probably disassemble and reassemble. Don Gray, thank you very much for the five bucks. Very interested in differences in this printer and X1 V4. I think I have the V1 X1, so I would have no idea what differences there are with the V4. Walter, Country 3D, doing okay, buddy. Oh, I forgot to check what's in the bag. Wait, hold on. Let's check what's in the bag. We have a couple of extra rollers, spare nozzle, a bit of PTFE tube. We have the spare LED, a couple of zip ties, uh, USB cable. We have the tools and the bolts we need. We have spanner. And we also have a couple of uh, spare ribbon cable plus the sticker that goes over it. So. Tenny, doing good yourself. Uh, best for you to guys to see. There you go. There. The X1 was relatively precise. I think, honestly speaking, the X1 is probably one of my favorite Chinese budget printers, to be honest. Hey, Scott. We're fine to make her. Oh, nice. This one is definitely one I approve of. Um, I honestly don't know if they released the source code for this one quite yet, but for the um, for the X one, it's released. It's on their site. Tom Filament Frenzy Sunday dollars for our Maltese genius. Also hi, sorry I'm late. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you so much, dude. Okay, so that's done. Next, we'll move this up a bit. I need to put some cables together here. This is for, what is this for? For the, it has, okay, for the um, limit switch or the, the sensor, the Z-axis sensor here. That's for one stepper motor. And that's for two.
We've got a good x1 config. This one might be smaller. Cool. Got to go with daughter's 16th birthday meal. Time to love. Meal time. Love to all catch up later. Thank you very much for dropping by, Matt. What is the price of the Genius right now? At the moment, there is offers on Banggood and Gearbest. It's like $299. Um, so, pretty decent. Remove that. Oh, this is not just glass. This looks like the um, Anacubic style. I always forget what it's called. Okay, um, what I'm going to do next is make sure these are aligned because I fiddled with them and I'm going to fiddle with them a bit more. Just checking these. There you go. Now they're a bit... Better. Now we're talking. Nah, those look fine. That's one. And that's two. Yep. Should be all good now. Let me just make sure the gantry is level. That's like 11.95. And that's 11 pointer. Perfect. This. There's a bit of, wait, hold on. This way. And upwards. There's a slight bit of slack on the belt, so I'm just gonna adjust that. Hmm. Better. Let's click that like button, everyone. Fully agree. Like, you have to. Good things will happen to you if you do. <laughs> what did I miss? Okay, next. So now, ooh, okay. So let's bring this up a bit there so this obviously has changed a little bit um these two right here these go like this uh, for the spool holder however now you don't attach them to um the um the extrusions because this whole thing here is injection molded all of it from one side to next so this goes in there like that and then you have one here with this bolt over here it stays in here and it moves so when you need to change the spool when you have different size you just adjust that makes much more sense Mm. 
much better than before. This, I have no idea if they fixed. I wasn't really a very big fan of the previous um, uh, filament sensor thingy. What do you think of this price point as compared to the X1? Um, yes, it does seem too close. However, um, keep in mind that not everyone has the space for an X1, for example. Secondly, for those who want um, an Ender 3 Pro, they're going to spend like, what, 250 something like that. And for 50 bucks more, you have a machine that doesn't really require much tinkering, if at all, to be completely honest. So I, I think they did well with the price. Okay, next. We're gonna need... I'm gonna use some poop-colored filament, uh, like brown. Like it doesn't get as more brown than this. Because um, I want to make sure that whatever we print is not camouflaged by... Um, what do we call them? Um, Pretty glitters. So, I'm gonna plug this in, and hopefully the electricity doesn't go out. Ah, go away. Yes. Okay. Uh, wait, hold on. You guys need to see this first. Eddie, I need you to... Well, I can actually use my other 3D Maker Noob start screen. Um, next, we need a model. And for the model, we're going to use... Let me get this out of the way. Um... I figured we'd do a Marvin. But first, we need to create a printer. Uh, genius. It's 250. Distance from border to build plate. I'm going to set it at zero. Ignore all those. Reduce that just in case for now. Okay. Next, it does have a heat bed and a primary extruder. Okay, so let's start slicing. Um, here, new template, PLA 0 0.2 millimeter. And fill will do 15%, three shells, advanced. Okay, forward. That's fine. Extruder, we'll leave that at 0.46. Enable retraction. Uh, ooh, material amount will do. Let's do two for now. If you want, let me do 2.5. First flower distance. Since this is a volcano, we'll do we'll go minus 30 for now. Posting is 20, that's fine. Infill, flow rate, uh, infill pattern. Uh, rectilinear is fine. 
I don't did you see did you guys if you guys don't know I'm running a beta version of uh, of idea maker and now it has adaptive infill which is awesome um so top solid bottom solid that's fine okay Support, skirt, three, five millimeters, cooling, 100%, temperature, 60 and 205, that's fine. I don't know if you guys can hear Bella barking. Um, it's a 98% for now. Go away. So force attraction and layer change. We need void attraction and zen model. Avoid traveling through holes. Other checked in walls. That's fine. And that's fine. Just going through it again. Okay. Should be fine. So we'll do OK, we'll do slice, let's do preview. Let me see if I forgot something. How do you like Idea Maker compared to Cura? I never got, I never really got into Cura. I just couldn't adjust. This was much easier to me because it felt so familiar coming from Simplify 3D. Why is Bella not here? I think maybe that's why she started barking because you mentioned her. So exports. Decode. Done. All right. Let's get this. We'll do this. Now I need to do leveling. I love how quiet this thing is. So, this one, two, three, Let's try the others again. Okay, last one. Perfect. All right. So we're going to move Z up. Does this have assisted or auto bed leveling? It is assisted. Heat. We'll do extruder one. Actually, I could have just done the change and okay. Let's get it heating up. Why are you leveling the bed when it's not hot? Um, because it is a glass bed at the end of the day. Um, and it's not going to make that much difference. And it's manual leveling. I'll still do adjustments on the fly as I'm printing. Once it does the first layer, as it's doing, that is one of the main reasons why I do three skirts. Um, so as it's doing the skirts, I can adjust on the fly. Hi, Chris. Chris says hi. Who's Chris? Where's Chris? <laughs> A 
Hey, Josh Mel. Hey, Peter. No, it was literally um, four bolts. That was it. Four bolts. Nothing else. Okay, and that goes in there. And that's feeding. I need to. At least we know we, they definitely tested it. Why am I always looking for tweezers? I have like six tweezers. There. Done. Print. Marvin. Chris Riley said hello. Oh, awesome. Hi, Chris Riley. <laughs> I'm not wearing your shirt today. Um, but I was yesterday, all day, and the day before that. <laughs> it fits nicely. Hey, Trini Mekano, had any chance to read my email I sent you some time ago? I tried to read your Twitter, also Raku Media. I probably have. It's just been hectic with all the traveling coming back. I had so much to catch up on. Um, but all my emails are on my to-do list at the moment. So I'll probably get back to you by tomorrow, latest Tuesday. Oh, how awesome. <laughs> Is that a Blackmagic camera you are using on the printer? No, this is a Lumix G5. Or is it a G7? G7, sorry. Okay. Okay. Gorgeous first layer. Where are you from? I am from Malta. Um, I'm from there. <laughs> Look at the dust on the fan. There isn't that much dust on the fan. It just looks really bad, but it's not that bad. Yes, it is. It looks so much worse on the camera than it looks here. Okay, and that's, I think we need to, uh, let's do this so you guys can see better. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh. Why is it so... I need to fix this. I just Ender 3, Ender 5, do a Wi-Fi upgrade on your list to complete. Yes, everything's ready. I got a few more upgrades for it. So now it's going to come in the shape of a kind of like a vlog. Because whenever I have some time, I'm just going to grab a camera. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to work on it. TMC 228. I, I think they are TMC 2208. Options, uh, more. I think you guys will be able to see better like this. Hold on. Is my camera lens dirty? Uh, 
All right, now let me see if I can zoom in. Hold on. Ah. Why did my camera just die? No. Let's try, hold on. Let me see if I can zoom in for you guys. They're getting somewhere. Okay. Yes, much better. Oh, that looks gorgeous. <sighs> what is the best film that I can get for under five bucks? <laughs> It's, it's the one you can get for free. <laughs> Thanks for the shout out, Chris. I'm printing with Hershey's. Yes, I all oh, man. If only Hershey made a filament that you can actually print with and then eat. Although, technically speaking, you can just melt the chocolate and print with that. <clears throat> would it help if I send that mail again? Yes, it definitely would, honestly speaking. <clears throat> Ernie Falzon. Okay, Falzon. That's a Maltese surname. I'm from a place called Imjar. It's in the north. Um, I set it at 50 millimeters a second, but since it's a small layer, uh, it's probably running much, much less than that. Could be. Let me check if I can. No, oh, okay, I know what the problem is. My ISO is fine, but it's on manual. Wait, hold on. Give me a second. Why can't I get this thing to? Uh, oh, oh. I think it's the box lights. I changed the box lights and um, my setup is a bit different. That will have to do for now. Unfortunately, my other lights are over there. Let me zoom in again. Oh, wait, no, I cannot do that. Nope, nope. Well, that's the best you're going to get for now. Apologies, Tom. I know you love the... Um, there.
Hey, Ian Edwards, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, I love it. I love it. It's here. I have them here. See? Wait, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, let's talk while that's printing. Could you point out a memo where you are located and located? Or create a pin, blinking lighthouse, a bella sticker, as you like. <laughs> so I um, live somewhere around, actually, somewhere there. Somewhere around, hold on, let me move my mic. I live around somewhere here. Here. Yeah. What is the print volume of this machine? It's 220 by 220 by 250. Uh, there are links in the video description. What layer, how do you sum of this print? Huh? It's 0.2 millimeter layer height. The sure needs a board swap to work well, in my honest opinion. I do agree. Does Idea Maker have prepared profiles for either manufacturer or printers? Of course. I use Idea Maker exclusively nowadays um, for all my machine except um, the Mark III and the multi material because I use Slicer for those. Not because it cannot, but because it just, I, they're already preset. What are your new upgrades for the end of five? So there is the Do It Maestro. I uh, will most likely install a, um, a Bontech extruder, a direct extruder. I'll find a way to fit it uh, because I also have a slice hot end. I have, what else? There's the BL Touch to put together. There's a new railing system, which I got from uh, this company in the US. Um, I think that, that should be most of it for now. The language is a nightmare, multi's language. <laughs> Thing is, I mean, uh, strictly speaking, Companies can easily use Idea Maker to create their printer profiles like they do with Quora. It's still, you know, free to use. Shitu board. Shitu. I think of, I hear Shitu or Shitu box, and I think of Tom now. <laughs> Kevin! <laughs> Hey, Michael. Definitely refresh. I'm here and I'm not green. <laughs> hey, Jav, sent you mail again, again as a request or anything else. Okay, is it the extruder filament? What's your opinion on bell-driven Z-axes? Do you think they might be the future? Not as much as being the future. Um, they're just an alternative, honestly speaking. I've seen the way the Elite machine works um, 
works. <laughs> and it's just impressive. It's absolutely amazing. So I have no quarrels with Belgium and these. Chicho. <laughs> Shena from me and my daughter Bella. Shena, Shena, Dani. Did you manage? I sent you the new files. Joe, what do you think of this printer so far compared to the Signwinder X1 out of the box? This was way easier. <laughs> um, I mean, I like... So things I like over and above the X1, which I had. I don't have the experience with the, with the, uh, with the version 4. I like the fact that everything is injection molded. I like this top uh, injection molded piece with the thingies for the um, uh, the new spool holder. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's quiet. It's printing really good, actually. So you'll get to see it once you know um, it finishes because you can't see much. The light is really bad on it right now. Um, it would be good to check, I'm assuming that they're still using the, um, the, the heater, the, the throat, which has a pass through, um, PTFE, which I, I don't really like. Um, but I might take that apart for the review to have a look. I like the fact that it has a sock now on. It's a clean little machine. It's a clean little machine. <laughs> That's very true. I wish, I, honestly speaking, I haven't used the Shiron as much as I should have. Do you think this machine needs any upgrades? Honestly, no, it doesn't, or at least not that I can see. Um, one upgrade that I would say that wouldn't be that bad on it, uh, once they're released, would be um, the E3D Hermes extruder, the one I did on the, um, on the X1, because it just, it just works beautifully. Cap tubes time exactly. Um, I, I that's what I had done with the original uh, X1, but now it has the Hermes on it. Eddie, you coming to Murph? Who's coming to Murph? It's time to start thinking about Murph now. I will make my word to it to Earth one way or another. Actually, 3D Tiny. Um, Funny you should mention that, because when I was at Earth, um, the engineer who did the Elite Machines XL actually specifically showed me how when the machine is switched off, the gantry doesn't fall, or the x-axis doesn't fall. Does this genius need the bed cable guide too, like the artillery did? Um, I'd say I could do with a bed cable guide. Idea Maker has ironing too now. Yes, it does. Mike will be at Murph. Fernando will be at Murph. 3D Tanya will be at Murph. And Eddie will be at Murph. So I tell you what, Eddie, this is what we'll do. Do you still need to put your rail cord together?
Because if you do, maybe I can fly out to your area for a couple of days beforehand, and then we can just head up together. Um, it is, uh, let me tell you exactly, because I saw the dates last time, because it's the weekend after Malta Maker Fair. So it's going to be 4th and 5th April. Imagination to form. No. Michael will be at Murph. Awesome. So what do you think? Should we set a date? Shall I come around to your area, put the rail core together, and then head to Murph? So then what to do as my own spectacle this time. Awesome, Josh in the house, Alien 3D. If you don't know who Alien 3D is, I'll have a video of Alien 3D coming up soon because Alien 3D does these awesome boxes uh, they're subscription boxes, but they're not just, you know, filament samples. He actually has like full-blown, you know, electronics projects inside. Um, so you have like a complete project with all the electronics. And all you have to do is just print the files and put everything together. It's just awesome. Okay, time to check how many likes are there. There are currently 303, 334 people watching. How many likes? Someone tell me, quickly, or the world will end. What about the signed winder? Is it good? It's very good. Three D tiny. I agree. He also, he's a legend. Um, you've seen the photos of him at the Lincoln Memorial or in front of the White House? Legend, absolute legend. 88 likes. The shame. <laughs> oh, they're going up. There you go. My manufacturing competition. So I'm waiting for some parts uh, because I wanted to do the project myself. Um, so chances are in order not to delay any further, um, I will ask my manufacturer to announce the winner and then do like a full video on the winning design uh, separately. Uh, but we kind of discussed who the winner is. We've agreed on an outcome, um, but now I'm waiting from my manufacturer. Um, to get back to me. <laughs> Eddie? <laughs> oh, Eddie. <laughs> 117 going, see, see, I don't have to remind you to click on like, although it doesn't make any difference to be completely on it, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice. <laughs> This does look like a chocolate Marvin. <laughs> Let's see if I can make it a bit more. There you go. Will you be doing a review of the Elemgu Mars Pro Resin printer? Um, I don't know yet. I 
The thing is now there has been so many um, reviews of the Elegoo Mars. I don't know the Pro, I didn't even know there was a Pro version. Um, I'm testing the Frozen uh, at the moment, the Frozen 4K. Um, but I don't know if I'll be doing the Elegoo Mars. I will most likely be doing the Prusa SL1. Awesome 3D Jimmy. Whoa. That overhead lights brings out all the the sins as we call them in the multis. But that's just quite exaggerated. I'm going to leave it on so you guys can see. Awesome, Ben. I'll, I'll have a look. Maybe I can manage to do a review of it. Haas, fully agree. So there are currently... Um, I think two machines at the moment, which I'm really lusting over. Three machines now. Um, the Tool Changer, which should be coming very soon. A Rail Core 3D. And the Elite Machine Works. Oh, the Ultimate Excel. That thing is just a work of art. Eddie, thank you very much, dude. Attempt number two. YouTube doesn't want me to give you any money. Are you sure it's YouTube? <laughs> Are you just saying that there was a second attempt just to emphasize? <laughs> Did you put your order in for the Ultimate Excel from Elite Machine Works? I spoke to him when I was there. Uh, chances are what's going to happen is I'm going to get a machine on loan from them to review and then send back unless uh, I'll have a way to buy it off them. Juan Manuel. Well, we're almost done with the print. Someone needs to buy Thingiverso could be in the hands of a company not slowly dying. Well, there is Prusaverse now. It probably didn't let you because you were trying to donate like one dollar. That's why. <laughs> Did, did, did the pop-up come up calling you a cheapskate? <laughs> it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean it's Z-banding. So there's a lot of misconception because there's um, layers which are not aligned properly there's Z banding, um, but then there's uh, the, the, the layers not aligned properly could also be from the retraction settings and the extrusion settings. Now this is a volcano hot end, so it takes time to tune. And until you get to the tuning part, the fine tuning part, um, a lot of your pins will look like that. It doesn't look that bad looking at it like this. That looks like much worse than it actually looks here. <laughs> But it's priced like a real core. It is the real core of bed slingers. Um, it is like there is nothing cheap on that machine. It's just built really well. Agreed, Wes. Uh, they have the next, I think it's the final um, batch that they're waiting for at the moment. Thank you very much, Velimati. Thank you very much. See these, keep in mind that I just did a, a 
profile on the idea maker on the fly. Um, there are test prints to print to figure out the extrusion and the PLA itself. Um, so it takes time. It takes a bit of time. Oh, I also noticed that I put the temperature at 205, which is way too much for a volcano. Should be around 197, 98, um, possibly less because it's going really slow. Um, and that overcooks the filament, but now it's also done. Lovensky Lopez, hi from Orlando, Florida. Keep the good work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Don't you know the tool changer is bad according to a certain YouTuber? Let's not go there. I, let's not go down this path. <laughs> let's, let's not. The thing with the tool changer is very cool machine, but what to do with it? How's it? It's the, the problem is a lot of people see it as a 3D printer. It's not a 3D printer. Um, and I have a plan what to do with it and showcase what you can do with it. But I don't want to talk about it just yet because, you know, surprise. <laughs> Excuse me. Bed slinger. See? <coughs> Excuse me. This is part of the settings thingy, my bob. Okay. up here that's all settings related oh we'll wait a little bit for it to cool down so you can have a closer look at the rest of it at least looks quite good I have to say um, let me see if I can find a decent scraper I have no patience. I need patience. All those chemicals from PLA. <laughs> Let's not go there either. <laughs> The dimensional accuracies, um, if it's not that much, it's fine tuning of the filament settings. Brendan Mark Ward, thank you very much for the 20 bucks, dude. Thank you so much. Mevin. <laughs> there you go. All right, let me see if I can. Let's go to the back. Those just before you say ghosting, that's not ghosting. That is the start and finish line. Everything else, that's not Z banding for sure. It's way too inconsistent to be Z banding. So that's filament settings. So as you can see, it's slightly <coughs> it's not under extruded. I set the flow rate to be 96, I think, or 98. So that needs adjusting. But, you know, for an off-the-fly um, profile, I'm actually quite happy with that. That's not bad at all. Let's see if I can do... Closer. Can I do? Does the camera do closer? No. Whoop. It's as close as we can get. I 
is this good filament or out of the box? It's something I have in brown, <laughs> unnamed. But it's always good to test the printer with, you know, some of the worst filament you have uh, or you don't know what is um, and see how that comes out. With an on-the-fly profile, it can tell you a lot. So tuning the profile, using filament that, you know, is really good, you can see that there is going to be quite an improvement there. <coughs> would Z-Hop help with that? No, Z-Hop would have no bearing whatsoever. I used Idea Maker. Why would they use a volcano? Why wouldn't they? Uh oh, exactly, Eddie, why wouldn't they? It's high flow, quicker. The filament that should not be named. Maybe we can use it uh, from now on, like the filament that should not be named. <laughs> uh, there you go. There. Um. I'm, I'm honestly speaking, I'm quite happy for a very quick profile, with a weird filament. I'm fine with that. I can fix that easily. But does it taste good? <laughs> um, uh, you know what? It's been out for a couple of months, so I'm, I'm not going to try it just yet. Hey, Jake from State Farm. I have that problem in CR10S Pro. How to solve? Which problem? This, this is all profile dialing related because possibly maybe tighten the belts a bit more. Definitely tight. I didn't tighten this enough. So that's one thing. Hold on. There. See this? This is another reason. This didn't tighten enough when I pulled it out. I think it's because it got caught up with this side thingy my bob here. This. Yep. Yeah, it got caught with that. That's why this didn't tighten enough. So that could have, that's already one thing. So this, tighten it a little bit. This is tight. Um, then just fix the, um, the, the, the slicing profile. <coughs> will you upload your ID Maker profile when you have it dialed in? Yes, I will. What I will do is I'll start uploading. Uh, I have a website, haven't used it, haven't updated in a while. Um, I'll start, I'll do a download section where I can upload my profiles there. Thinking about Bob, too technical for me, <laughs> right? <laughs> well done. There you go. We also if they made easier ways to tighten these belts rather than just... See, I can see the T-nut is still kind of like hitting the side of this. So this is a bit of a design flaw here. This... I don't know. Oh, wait, you guys cannot see. Uh, okay, so... See this... Um, the belt tensioner here. The T-nut in there is hitting the side of this thingy here. So this is a small design flow. This should be, I know how to fix it. I know how to fix it. Here. There you go. There, fixed. <laughs> 
now, now I can properly, properly uh, tension it. That's much better. There. Let's see what I did. So this was closed up. All right, hold on. Hammer. This this is fine. That's my hammer. Um, so this was completely flush to the rail. And as you can see, that T-nut there, um, now it's now it's taut, um, but it couldn't because I couldn't pull that out anymore because that T-nut was hitting that. So now it should be fine. And I cut that off and now it's perfect. <laughs> I know how to fix it breaks things. <laughs> hey, it works, okay? Is it $100 better than the Ender 3? Mm, yeah. I'd say I would, okay, if it was my money, I probably would have no issue spending $100 extra to get this instead of the Ender 3. Uh, one, it's pre-assembled. Two, much better build quality. Um, and it's, it's a direct extruder. just <laughs> But that's you know it works. It's that's why you have injection molding, so you can so you can cut it. <laughs> and now I can just use my 3D CMO Multi Pro to just iron that out. <laughs> Eccentric nut, unfortunately, you are. Um, wait, hold on. There. Let's do that. It's not perfect, this, the nut is sticking out of the extrusion. It is, but there is another, there is this bolt and then there is another bolt in here. There are two. So it's okay, it's still, it's still tight. No, it's not perfect. It could do with being possibly maybe five millimeters thicker. Um, yeah, but it works. How does it compare to Sidewinder? Um, honestly, I'm going to be very honest. I don't recall. And now the Sidewinder has the Hermes on it. So everything I print is just beautiful. <laughs> um, but it's, I mean, I, I can only judge by how it was built, uh, how quickly it was built, how quickly it started printing, and the quality of a print with a filament that is... Um, we're not going to talk about it much. And a quick filament, a quick profile. And it's, I'd give it 7.5 out of 10. And if I, I think would easily get to 8.59 out of 10 in print quality. Are the flat sides of the belt touching at the zip tie? What zip tie? Are the, hmm? are the flat sides of the belt? No idea what you're referring to. I don't know why I run my finger there. I have no idea what you're looking for. <laughs> I did not understand that. Hey, Tomas. Thomas Moore. Mrots. Sorry. I'm getting late now. Designer of that voice cried. <laughs> Race table to the top bar. I mean, it is. It's, it's it's all moving. I like it. I like it. It's small. It's neat. It's compact. I approve. 
belt attach at the extruder tooth to tooth yes it is tooth to tooth on this side goodbye Marvin and also that side I'm hearing something. <laughs> I'm, I, I was hearing like a, a tick and a tick and a tick. And then now I notice the fly came in here and it's hitting one box, one light box, and then the next light box, and then goes this one. And then <laughs> it looks like it sounded like dripping. I heart 3D printing. So when are we going to drag race on a live stream? I met you at Earth, approximately a one hour print. Thank you very much, first and foremost. Um, so, uh, I like that idea. And we can suggest it here. We can do a mass live stream of a quick turning 3D. The discussion with iHeart 3D printing was turning 3D, sprint, 3D printing into kind of like a sports. Um, so, quick prints. How quickly can you print something in particular while it still looks good? Just kind of the competition they did at Earth, you know, turned into like an esports. Marvel went on a road trip. <laughs> you just pointed out the belt was slipping because they had flat sides to flat sides. Wirecat, keep doing it. Thank you very much, Wirecat. Marvin Donald. <laughs> Use on your Miro Malta. Uh, those are um, WS28 something. Um, the individual addressable LEDs, of course. I have, I think there's about I think seven or eight, seven meters worth of lights, something like that. Right, so I'm gonna call this a night. Hey, Martin, what's going on? I'm about to say goodbye to everyone. And I'm gonna go get something to eat. And go have a shower. Guys, when people have that box on top left, is that also on Twitch? Twitch has 3D printer people. Oh, that's just um, um, Streamlabs and OBS. Large form resin printer. Nice. Would the Ender 3 or this one be a good one to start off with? Um, it's it's kind of hard to say uh, because I don't know what type of person you are. Um, this is going to be much easier to set up and, you know, start printing. Um, and uh, the difference is the Ender 3 has a much larger community, a much more upgrades. This might not require that many upgrades. Radio Maker Joe, please, thanks. Yes, I will. I think I should have one. Uh, my old one, because now my CR10 Pro also has a Hermes. <laughs> right. I'm going to love you and leave you guys. Um, I want to thank you very much for joining. I want to thank you. Uh, I think to, I want to thank, sorry. I want to thank everyone for the very generous donations tonight. I truly appreciate it. Um, I have a couple of awesome videos coming out in the next couple of weeks. Um, there's also Form Next coming up, um, which I'm really looking forward to. 
And I want to know while I'm here, just a quick question. I want to know how you guys feel about uh, the videos that I uploaded from Earth, me interviewing people. Like, do you like them? Um, do you think I should just, you know, um, not do that at all <laughs> and just do B-roll? But I felt like it was more interactive. So, you know, um, you guys need to let me know. Uh, but I'm going to form next. Um, it's not sponsored, so um, I'd be much more relaxed. But I still intend to interview a few people there. So, yeah, let me guys, uh, let me know uh, what you feel. Um, yeah. Genius. <laughs> yeah. And in the meantime, I'm going to go grab some food because I'm hungry. I like them, I like them, I found them interesting, I like them. So there, it's, you know, consensus is they're good. <laughs> Chris? <laughs> awesome. Okay, good to know. Right. So once again, I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm going to thank you for your attendance tonight. Uh, make sure you hit that like button. Very important. If you're not, if you don't have that bell thingy, my Bob, jiggy there, um, click on it um, so you get notified when I upload videos, which I tend to do here and there. Um, and also, I have a Tronxy X5SA Pro in a box, which I want to do a live build of. Um, so I don't know if it's going to be next weekend or the weekend after that, but I'm leaving that in the box because it's going to be like an extensive build and it's been a while since I did one of those. So yeah, watch out for that too. In the meantime, thank you guys for watching and happy making.